Wealth managers love to say to people who have a lot of money, start a foundation, give me your money, I'll invest it, and you'll give away 5%. But I learned in school, maybe it's different in Germany, that 100% is more than 5%. What do I mean by that? Why are you taking the 100% of your money, investing it in things that make the world worse, profiting from that, and giving away 5%? The four organizations that are the worst sustainable investors are grant-making foundations, NGOs who have money, trade unions, and religious institutions. Most of them do not manage their money in line with their values or mission. If they would take the 100% of the money, create a sustainable portfolio, and make money and give away 5%, you have 20 times more impact that shows that you are really committed to that. This idea of the 5% return because of a foundation is stupid and insulting. For the opportunities that you have, utopia.de, which is what you hear for today, investor salons, clean energy project finance, green real estate, green mortgages with power tie-in, you have that already here, but not so much linked to green mortgages, clean tech private equity, a carbon credit offsets, which they actually exist now by some companies, ESG equity funds, second generation engagement, which you'll probably hear about more. Let's invest actually in the worst sustainable performing companies and change their behavior, because we cannot change the behavior of very large companies. Look at the Rockefellers. They founded ExxonMobil. They had no impact at all in trying to change the behavior of ExxonMobil. Focusing on the worst of class and small and mid-cap and using activist engagement is a much more effective way. Forest investment, ESG, bonds, biofuel. You'll see Cargill, who just invested a lot in eco-securities, retrofitting buildings and paying for environmental service, microfilm bonds. These are clear opportunities that you can do to maintain the returns that are acceptable and have a and have had social and environmental impact. What can you do now? Ask the bank, the bank that you're with, if any of the banks are here, I'm happy to talk to you privately, how much are you committed to, committed to, committed to, committed to, committed to, committed to ESG? Demand that your wealth manager offers you the opportunity of an ESG portfolio. If not, go to another bank. If they say it's not possible, give them my number. Demand ESG choice in your pension fund. If all the pension funds offer choice to the pensioners, they could no longer say, well, our pensioners really don't care where they, we put our money. They just want to have income when they die, before they die. Demand ESG policy from your church, trade union, foundation, and NGO. Remember that some of the NGOs have portfolios managed by money managers in London and pay two-thirds of their staff no money. So they're actually working with slave labor, but they have money in the bank. So at least manage that money in line with their values. Ask for SRI investment banks and pension funds. Align the values with your employer. If your employer is not in line with your values, what the hell are you doing there? Either change the company or go to another one. Ask the financial sector for environmental and risk policy. Demand that. That's how you get change. They listen to customers. Invest in sustainable enterprise. Show a real, clear commitment. You cannot be partially pregnant with this. It's not going to happen unless you really commit to making it happen. And tikkun uh, olam, let's repair the earth. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people together to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them the, to long for the endless immensity of the sea. That's a beautiful quote. I'd like to leave you with that quote and also ask you what is going to be your legacy? Did you add gasoline to the forest fire and enjoy the barbecue? That's okay if that's your choice but I would like somebody to actually say, yes, that is going to be my legacy. I made things worse, and I'm proud of it.
Or did you grab a hose, build a fire break, and plant new trees? Another possibility is that you, did you build a carbon neutral economy and profit immensely? Because then we all benefit, and you feel good about that. And what are your business goals? Do you or your clients want to support, profit, and facilitate social and environmental destruction? I have no problem if you want to do that. That's fine, but at least admit that is your business goal. Or do you want to profit, facilitate, and support social and environmental restoration? It's your choice. My time is up. Thank you. Mr. Rubenstein, thank you. May I ask you a quick question? We had... You can ask me a slow question, too. I can ask you a slow question, too. Um, we had quite a few questions coming in and the desire from the audience to ask questions. I have one for you. Mm -hmm. Do you see any sort of positive aspects in the actual global financial crisis? Only. I only see positive aspects. I think this is the best thing that ever happened to us. For 25 years, we've been on this eating binge of overeating and overconsuming for 25 years, eating foie gras and cristal and, and sweets and putting on way too much weight, unhealthy, and now we have to go on a diet. Is that so terrible? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I think we don't think so either, but we wanted to know no, what you think, I think about it's, it. I th and I think it's the best leverage and the best trigger for the policymakers to embrace the concept of a Green New Deal. Massive infrastructure, a smart grid for Europe, really pushing renewables, because renewables is a one-time investment. You don't pay for the fuel. Why, you know, how big of an elephant has to fall on your head before you get it? This is a one-time investment. We're not paying for the geothermal fuels, we're not paying for the solar uh, fuels, we're not paying for the wind, and we won't be paying for wave. So just come on, get, get on with it. I had actually, I actually had Greg. I had Greg Craven coming to me during the lunch break. He's sitting over there and he can confirm. Completely hysterical. He said, Alfonso, we need to talk. You need to please sort it out because I had to skip my two pages at the end. Uh, it's very important. You need to tell them that if they look at the financial crisis, how quick it all went down, and then suddenly how awake everyone got up of it, if we see that development and we portray it to whatever we are trying to achieve here today, we don't need to let it come to that point where suddenly everything really collapses because then he believes, and I believe, and I think you do too, it's gonna be too late. So we should it's see never too late. So we should see the drama that has happened over there and try to avoid it by trying to do everything possible that we can in order to get to that you know, stage. People people forget that we've gone through recessions. You know, it's not like, oh my God, there's a recession coming on, how are we gonna survive? We've gone through a lot of recessions. We've gone through the depression. The difference is we're much smarter now. There's much more money available. We screwed up and we let the people screw up. I was speaking in Spain and I, I didn't realize that Spa Spain is the second largest savings bank country in Europe. Germany's number one. Germany has a thousand billion euro, Spain has 600 billion euro. I asked them, how much money did the Spanish banks lose on the subprime? They said, uh, nothing. Nobody lost any money. Oh, are they that much smarter in Spain? No, the central bank just made it impossible for anybody to make money on it because they said, okay, we don't understand this stuff. You want to buy it? Put it on your books. That means they have to recapitalize. That meant we can't make money on this. So nobody bought it. So the stupidity of the central banks was shown clearly. And what was the central bank in Spain getting from the central bank in the UK? You guys are too strict. You're too strict. You're, you're stifling development. They have other problems now, but on that issue, they were smart. Last question, which I think is uh, very important because it is something that's going to happen now this weekend. Is It's in German. Can't okay, read. that's right. But I can translate it for you. Good practice. Is, um, what are you expecting from uh, 
the global financial summit that is uh, taking place this weekend? Well, it's the uh, first time that the Americans have nothing to say. Thank you very much for having said so much to us today. I'll let you go with that message, and uh, let's see the outcome of this weekend's Global Financial Summit. Thank you very much.